via social media, and some of you only view for a few seconds, so we want to make sure that we get in some highlights uh, before we get into the meat of the lesson. Our lesson this morning is ears to hear. How many of us need ears to hear the word of the Lord, ears to hear the voice of the Lord. Just a few weeks ago, our pastor ministered on how to hear the voice of God, a very important teaching, a very important principle for these last times. There are some practical points. I want to go over six practical points uh, in the very beginning, and then we will elaborate as we continue on. Uh, the first of which is we should take advantage of every opportunity to hear God's word. What's your opportunity this morning to hear the word of the Lord? You have tuned in to Kingdom Precepts. You can also uh, be a part of the morning worship service. Take every opportunity that you have to hear the word of the Lord. Practical point number two, we cannot know God's plans apart from his gracious revelation of them. We need a revelation. That's what I want to share with you this morning. You need a revelation from on high, a revelation from God. You need God to speak to you specifically, to give you a rhema word for your situation. Pray this morning for a revelation from God. Practical point number three, spiritual truth can be grasped only by those who are indwelt by God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter that God promised to give unto us. It is a gift. We need to be endowed, endued with power from on high. We need the Holy Spirit of God to be in control of our lives. We're talking about having ears to hear this morning. How can we hear except we be indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. Practical point number four, hearing God's truth is of no value unless the hearing is accompanied by faith. Make sure that you mix the word that you hear this morning with faith. When the word is mixed with faith, then there will be a display. Hallelujah. Something will take place. God will move on your behalf. Practical point number five, we should never take for granted the divine blessing of spiritual understanding. Remember, we're going to go into these scriptures where the Pharisees, the Sadducees were listening to Jesus, but they had no understanding of what he was actually saying. As believers, we are given wisdom and understanding of those spiritual things that God is speaking, that God has announced over our lives. He gives us insight. Uh, I'm mindful of the scripture that said we're called the friends of God and a friend will let another friend know what's going on. God will give you revelation. He'll give you insight. Practical point number six. This is our final point, And then we're going into an elaboration of the teaching. Uh, the privilege of having God's full revelation obligates us to learn it and to live it. These are some powerful truths. These six practical points you want to get under your belt, hallelujah, uh, underline them in your heart, go over them once more and again, and ensure that you understand what God is doing in your life, what God is saying in these particular scriptures. Now, I've given you those six practical points. I want to make sure that we got them in, in the first few minutes of this live. So if some of you have to drop off, you'll have those six practical points in your hearing. Our lesson today, lesson nine, that is to be taught July the 30th in the year 20 and 23. Uh, July is about to leave here. We have one more day in this month, but thank God, hallelujah that he is blessing in the midst of this month. It's been a hot month, glory to God. It's been a hot summer, thank you, Jesus. Our air conditioners are pushed to the max, thank you, Lord. But nonetheless, God is blessing and providing for us. In our previous teachings, we talked about uh, literally having compassion on the poor and developing strategies, developing avenues or vehicles by which we can be of assistance to those who are less fortunate. We wanted to uh, espouse the truth that children, the children of God, Christian believers, 
must be careful to maintain good works. How do we do that? By developing strategies to help the poor. Glory to God. So we don't want to forget that. I want to rehash that even as we go into our new lesson, that we maintain good works. Find yourself doing something good for the kingdom, doing something good for your neighbor and your community. Our lesson topic again is ears to hear. The lesson text is taken from Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 9 through 17. I had a particular um, related scripture that I really want to deal with this morning because it is powerful. It was a blessing to me in this past week, and I want to share it with you. And that is 1 Corinthians, uh, the second chapter, verses 6 through 16. So underline that, that particular verse of scripture or verses of scripture. We're going to go there as well. Our lesson is divided in two parts. It may be kind of brief this morning, so get in, get in on it real quick. The first part is the importance of listening. Uh, that is a vital tool no matter where you are, what particular uh, group or organization that you are involved in. Listening is very important. Often we're so busy trying to think about what we're going to say that we fail to listen, we fail to hear. In uh, the, the, the realm of education, when our kids are uh, in the Duval County school system, private schools, all those types of things, it's very important for the kids to be able to listen to what is taught so that they can implement, hallelujah, the principles. If they don't listen, if they don't hear, then when execution time comes, they fail. Thank you, Lord. So it's so very important to hear, to listen. Often, if you have been called by a teacher, if you've been called by an administrator of the school system, they will often tell you your child will not listen, will not hear. It's important. If they do not listen, if they do not hear, they cannot learn, they cannot implement the principles that are being taught. The same in Christianity. We must listen. We must hear the word of life that's being taught even on this morning. Your preacher, your teacher, your uh, leader will be uh, teaching the word of life today. You have to have ears to hear it in order to benefit from those teachings. So that's that portion of our teaching is Matthew 13. Verses 9 through 13, the importance of listening. Part number two, the discrepancies in listening. Are there some discrepancies in listening? Matthew 13, verses 14 through 17. You know the truth, hallelujah, that we don't all hear the same. Thank you, Jesus. In my household, sometimes my husband is saying something, and I get something totally different, and I come back and repeat what I heard. He said, that's not what I said. Thank you, Lord. So we have to be careful how we hear, ensure that we are hearing correctly, especially the word of life. You're going to find your, your salvation in the word. You're going to find your eternal life in the word. So it's important that you hear and you hear correctly. Now, listen to this introduction. It'll be brief, but listen. Do you know that parables were something uh, uh, like this, like speaking in a uh, foreign language or speaking uh, in something that you don't uh, particularly understand. Jesus taught his followers in parables so that they could gain spiritual understanding while others listening in could not. A parable is a natural illustration that displays a spiritual or heavenly truth. Jesus spoke to his disciples in parables in order to cover, in order to disguise the truth of what he was saying. Remember, sometimes we're so very open, and the Bible tells us, cast not your pearls to the swine. Don't just give all your knowledge and your understanding to somebody who cares nothing about the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't give it to the Pharisees. He knew their purpose. He knew that their, their motives were, were not right. So he didn't share the treasures of the kingdom with them. He spoke in parables. He had a covert language. I like that. I used to watch a, a show called Covert Affairs that dealt with spies. Thank you, Lord. So Jesus in effect is operating covertly. Only those who had hearts 
uh, and minds that were geared toward holiness or geared toward him would be able to understand what he was saying. And many times when he spoke in those parables, they didn't understand it either. Glory. He had to explain it to them. He had to give some explanation. The same thing with us. Sometimes God can speak to us. Uh, if you're like me, a lot of times he speaks to me through dreams. And I'll get up uh, from my sleep saying, God, what did this mean? Was this really something you were trying to tell me or is it just a dream? Hallelujah. He has to explain to me what's going on. Sometimes we can hear a word spoken and sometimes people are always talking about what God said and they give you a, a full book report. Uh, he doesn't speak like that uh, particularly. Sometimes God can give you just a word. When I woke up, as soon as I woke up this morning, I heard the word overflow. Thank you, Jesus. He was speaking to me, overflow. What that overflow will entail, God has to open it up to, to me and reveal it to me exactly what he's talking about. Oh, bless his name. But I like the connotations of it, don't you? Amen. So, <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> Jesus taught his followers in parables so that they could gain spiritual understanding while others listening in could not. Uh, the spies that were uh, 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 pointed out uh, or planted, that's what I'm trying to say. Those spies that were planted, they really couldn't understand what Jesus was saying. Without spiritual insight, people were incapable of grasping the truth being taught. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 through chapter 3 and 4, Paul wrote of different types of people. Spiritual immature, get this. There are some spiritually mature people. Look around you in your church. Uh, look around you with people that you associate with, maybe people in your family, in the community. There are some spiritually mature people. Those are the people that you really want to be around. Those are the people that you want to emulate. Those are the people that you want to gain spiritual insight from. Spiritually mature. We have so many spiritually immature people that are trying to teach others. Glory to God. That's a problem. They're not fully developed. Glory to God. So they're uh, dispersing that uh, uh, undeveloped teaching on others. Be so very careful. So he says it's different types of people, spiritually mature, spiritually immature. That's what we're talking about. Hallelujah. Not a whole lot you can gain from a spiritually immature person, but there are a lot of things that you can teach them if you are spiritually immature. And natural or the unsaved or the carnal. Our pastor used to say two things you can learn, how to be and how not to be. From the spiritually uh, discerned or the unsaved or the carnal, we can learn a lot of things about how not to be. Amen. Each group responds differently to the truth. Not only do they respond differently to the truth, but I want to take it a little bit further. They respond differently to trouble. The spiritually immature will fall apart when trouble comes. And that's why the Lord uh, encourages us to become spiritually immature, to become grounded upon a rock. Hallelujah. To grow in him, to become spiritually immature. So that when trouble comes, we won't be blown away. It reminds me of the illustration, of course, of the house that was built on sand versus that house that was built upon a rock. Trouble came upon both houses. But the house that was built upon a rock withstood uh, the trouble, withstood the storm. So it's so very important, and that's why we have teachings like this, that we become spiritually mature because trouble will come knocking on your door. Ask me how I know two years ago during this very month, trouble came knocking on the door of the right household. And except for God, except for being founded and grounded in his holy word, we would have crashed. We would have crumbled. But we're withheld. We're upheld by the power of God. So make this your endeavor this morning to become spiritually mature in God. And by that, by uh, what, what, what results from that is ears to hear, ears to hear, God's voice, ears to hear the word of God. When a person preaches or teaches the word of God, 
His listeners hear him through preconceived ideas that determine what they understand from the message. This is a problem. When we're listening, when we're seated in our seats and the message is going forth, the enemy to the word is preconceived ideas. We're to sit and quiet those preconceived ideas and hear what is written in the book. In the past few weeks, these lessons that we have been going through, I have learned some things that I did not know or I did not take to heart of what Jesus was really saying in the scriptures. I already had preconceived ideas. I had already heard it preached a different way. So I felt that was the only way. But after you delve into these scriptures and you really hear attentively what God is saying, then you can find out the truth of his word. Glory to God. You'll find out how to rightly divide the word. So many people, hallelujah, are not rightly dividing the word of truth. So many people are coming with preconceived ideas, preconceived notions of what grandma taught, or what their preacher of old taught, glory to God, what they learned when they were growing up. You better get in this book and find out the truth. Hallelujah. That's why we have to renew our minds and renew our heart. That's why we have to study to show ourselves approved. I've been saved 43. I think this, yeah, this is my 43rd year of salvation. Thank you, Lord. A lot of things I've learned during those 43 three years. But one thing I learned, there's some stuff I've forgotten as well. So I have to continue to study. There are some things that I, I was taught perhaps a little bit differently than what was written in the book. Thank you, Lord. So I have to go back and study. Don't come to the church house today with preconceived ideas. Hear the word of God purely with a pure heart. Hallelujah. And be an open vessel, an empty vessel, uh, just ready to be filled up with the word. Let's continue here. Unsaved people cannot grasp spiritual truth. That's just the truth. Unsaved, you don't understand this word. It sounds like Greek to you. I always tell the story of right before I got saved, I knew of someone that was born again, and they seemed to be living a good life. I said, I guess, you know what I'll do? I'll just be saved. You know, I didn't follow the protocol. I didn't follow what the scripture said. Just thought I could be saved on my own. And I could study the Bible. I couldn't find a thing in this book. Lord have mercy. I called myself trying to find Daniel in the lion's den. Never found it. Glory to God. If, if you're spiritually discerned, if you're unsaved, if you're carnal, you cannot perceive spiritual things. You have to receive the spirit of God in order to receive this insight. This is good stuff. Uh, they hear the message one way. Spiritually immature people cannot grasp much spiritual truth, so they hear in a different way. Spiritually mature people hear in a distinctive way as well. They are able to grasp the truth that others cannot. So it behooves us as children of God to become spiritually mature so that we can hear correctly so that we can hear the word of God rightly and hear the voice of the Lord as he speaks so distinctively to us. Let's get into the teaching. First part, the importance of listening, Matthew 13, starting with verse 9. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus starts with this. He's been teaching the disciples. He's given them various parables. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And now he says he that has, well, everybody got an ear, don't they? Everybody got natural ears, but everybody uh, does not have spiritual ears to hear or do not have spiritual ears to hear. So that's what he's dealing with here. He's speaking kind of like, it sounds kind of asinine. Well, how do you say that, you know, he has an ear to hear? We all got ears. We all can hear you. We're not deaf. But he's talking about spiritually hearing. He's talking about having insight. He's talking about receiving wisdom and understanding of the parable that he set forth before. Glory to God. He speaks covertly. Because the Pharisees and the Sadducees are right there 
trying to trick him up in some knowledge, trying to trick him up in some of his teaching. Glory to God. But he is speaking covertly to his people, to the disciples, so that they will understand and the Pharisees will not. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Now, who has ears to hear? This morning, that question falls to all of us. Who has ears to hear? Who can spiritually discern what the Lord is saying to the church in these last times? Let me tell you, we are living in the last days, and we need to be able to hear what God is saying. When there are various viruses that are being released in the earth, we need to hear what the Lord is saying. When dangers are all around us, Christian believers need to be able to hear what God is saying to us so that we can be protected, so that we will be those people that's in the land of Goshen, protected from all the harm that's all around us. So verse 10 says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in a parable? The disciples say, Now, Lord, we know that you want to gain disciples. We know that you want the kingdom of God to be advanced. Why are you speaking covertly? Why are you speaking in code? Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we speak in code, don't we? And people say, what in the world are they talking about? I know you're talking about me. What are you saying? It's sometimes when we're in the nail salon and the Vietnamese or people of another nation, you know, they start talking in their language and I don't like it because I don't know what you're saying. Are you talking about my feet? <laughs> Glory to God. <clears throat> so it's so very important uh, here. The disciples are wondering why is Jesus speaking in code? We can't gain other people with you speaking in code, Lord. But the Lord had a particular reason. He goes on to say, verse 11, he answered and said unto them, because, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. You are special. You have been anointed. You have been selected. You have been chosen by God. And there's some secrecies, there's some mysteries that are going to be revealed unto you. God is going to give you a revelation of himself. He's going to give you a revelation of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. This is a club that's for members only. Hallelujah. Some people say, oh, you think you're special. You can say, I am. I'm a part of the Christian kingdom. I'm a part of Christianity. There are some things that's given to me that's not given to you. Thank you. However, you can come on over and join this club. You can come on over and become a member or a Christian. You can get saved, and then it will be given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It's such a blessing. We should feel honored. We should feel privileged that God has chosen us. Hallelujah. And that he can speak mysteries to our heart. He can let us know things that are getting ready to transpire before they happen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Do I have Bible on it? Oh, yes. With Abraham. He said, shall not I tell Abraham what I'm getting ready to do? He'll teach his children. God was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But before he did it, he consulted with his friend Abraham. Isn't that a blessing? God calls us friends. He will consult with us. He'll let us know what's going on. And Abraham began to bargain with God. Oh, God, don't do that. God, please don't destroy Sodom. I've got my nephew over there. A lot is over there with his family. Don't destroy him. And God began to say, if I could find 50 people over there living righteously, I won't do it. Thank you. Then it went on down to 10. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes God is getting ready to, to send forth destruction, and we know some of our relatives, some of our loved ones, people that we care for may get destroyed, and we get to praying to God, Lord, don't destroy them. Lord, protect them. Lord, bring them out. God can hear your prayer and turn from the wrath that he intended. God didn't totally turn from the wrath he intended for Sodom and Gomorrah, but he saved Abraham's family out of that situation. Hallelujah. It lets us know <clears throat> that as those that have been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, 
that we have some clout, we have some power, we have some pull with God. All we have to do is intercede on the behalf of others. I love that, that God will hear my prayer. God will cover those that I'm praying for. Hallelujah, Jesus. The situation can be turned around. Fred Hammond said, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God, let's start praying on behalf of our loved ones that God will turn those situations around in their lives. Sometimes we see our children going down a road of destruction. Mothers and fathers pray that God will turn those situations around. Hallelujah. We've been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. We've been given insight. We've been given wisdom and understanding into the kingdom of God. But those who are without, those who are unsaved, they have not. They don't have a clue. They are clueless as to what God is doing in these present times. Verse 12 says, <clears throat> For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. That's what God spoke to me this morning. Overflow. Oh, I see it now, God. If you got something right now, God's going to add to it. Uh, Dr. Chapman, Eileen Chapman sent me a message this morning, said, God has more for you. I said, amen, sis. I believe that. I receive that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you've got something in God right now, he's going to add to it. He's not going to take away from it. Thank you. Your wisdom, your understanding, your knowledge of him, God's going to add to it. He's not going to take it away. For whosoever hath, and, and it kind of reminds me of the talents, you know, uh, God gave out talents. He gave one five, he gave one just one. And that person with one talent buried it. God said, you wicked servant, how dare you bury what I've given you? How, how dare you uh, take in vain what I have given you? Call it worthless. Thank you. He said, take it from him and give it to the one that had five or whatever it was. So to him that have shall more be given. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you who are working all you know to do for the kingdom of God, looks like uh, your labor is in vain. Your labor is not in vain. God's going to give you more. God's going to add to your abundance. Thank you. Just keep on working in God. Keep on tilling that land. Keep on working in the Lord's vineyard, and he's going to give you more. Verse 12 again, for whosoever have, to him shall be given, and he, ha he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, don't be found lacking in this season. Don't be found having nothing in this season. Glory to God. Not having a knowledge of God. Not having a relationship with God. Thank you, Jesus. Not being able to hear the voice of God. Don't you be found in these circumstances in this season and in this time. It's dangerous. Hallelujah. How dangerous is it? But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Oh, my Lord. Treasure what you have. Build upon what you have. Thank you that God will give you more and not take away that which you already have. Thank you, Jesus. The pastor taught on uh, God being, uh, Jesus being the true vine and how we are to abide in him. He talked a little bit about pruning, and that was during the Wednesday Bible study. Y'all need to be in on that Wednesday Bible study. It was a good study. But he talked about how God will prune you and cut you back a little bit not to hurt you, but that you will produce more fruit. Thank you, Jesus. He gave the illustration about this huge tree that was in my yard. Never forget this tree. We first moved in the house in 1996. And that tree looked like it was about to die. Well, pastor, in his pastoral role, began to pray for the tree. Amen. And the tree grew over these 27 years. That tree grew until all the branches were almost about to touch the house. And I said, oh, no, something got to be done about this tree. So we called a tree surgeon, and he began to cut those limbs back. He cut so many limbs. I mean, the, the, the street was full of those limbs, almost like a whole nother tree. Thank you, Lord. But that tree is now standing up and shaped and formed. And guess what? 
it's really going to start bearing more fruit now. But hopefully by the time it touches the roof again, I won't be there. (laughs) But that's what God does to us. He prunes us. He cultivates us so that we will bring forth more fruit. He does not want us to live stagnant lives, going nowhere. He desires increase. He desires more in our lives. Let me continue on. I think that is so good right there. I think that God has given us a good word on that. So in your life today, sometimes you wonder, God, if you look at other people, God is doing so many things in their life. God wants to do some things in your life too. Just yield to him and make sure that you develop an ear to hear his voice. Now, verse 13 says, therefore, therefore, speak I to them in parables because they seeing see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. This was such a conflicted verse for me when I first got born again. I'm like, what? (laughs) What is he saying? Glory to God. But we're going to break it down. It starts out with the word, therefore. That is a connecting verb. It's connecting the principle that was stated before it. So God says, therefore, speak I to them in parables or code or stories, hallelujah, because he doesn't want them to really understand. Why doesn't he want them to understand? Because they don't mean well. Because they're not looking for salvation. They're looking to find something to be in conflict with Jesus about. So he speaks covertly so that they see, they see, but they don't really see. Hallelujah. They don't really understand is a better word. Have you ever seen something? Have you ever read something? And you say, well, I see what's being said here, but I don't understand it. Oh, how many times? Sometimes I've had to read stuff over and over and over again, especially when it's instructions to put something together. I fail every time. I can't put a stool together reading the instructions because I fail to understand. My mind just does not go in those steps. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So with the, the Pharisees here, he said, They can see, but they really won't understand what's right there in front of them. Thank you, Lord. The truth of the kingdom was right there in front of them, but they did not understand. They knew that Messiah should come. And the Messiah was right there in front of them, but they did not understand that it was Jesus, that it was the father sending his only begotten son in the form of sinful flesh. They failed and the answer was right there in front of them. Sometimes we're trying to teach my little grandson math principles and we ask him a question. We say, the answer is right there in front of you. Look at it. Hallelujah. Understand it. Hallelujah. This morning, the answer is Jesus. And he's right there before your face. Hallelujah. Lend your pure heart so that you can understand and receive all that he's saying to you. So here he says, because they seeing, see not, and hearing, hear not. They were trying to spy on Jesus, but they didn't understand a word of what was going on. All that he was saying to the disciples sound like Greek to them. Because they did not have hearts to understand. Let's move into the second division, and and we're we're coming pretty close to a close here. I want to go to 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6. Oh, thank you, Sister Pastor Sheila. I see that you're on watching with us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6 says, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of the world, Uh, that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of the world knew, of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now listen to this, Jesus was right there, and they tried to get rid of him, what? By crucifying him. They thought that they could get rid of him by by killing him, but all they did was bring him to life, bring his truths to life. 
They did not understand that they were playing right into the Father's hand. Let me keep on reading. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard all the things, uh, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now, for this particular scripture, I just really have applied it, and I think it can be applied in this manner, that, you know, God is preparing something uh, great for us in glory, and that is true. But it is also dealing with the fact that presently, as the children of God, we can have ears to hear what others can't hear. Thank you. We can have the mysteries of God revealed in our hearts that will not be revealed to those that are of this world. So you should uh, uh, consider yourself privileged. You should consider yourself blessed that you have been chosen of God. Hallelujah. And he will reveal to you. And we talk about this particularly in this time. Uh, we talk about the logos, which is the written word of God. But we also talk about a rhema. And that's a special word out of the word. Something specific for you that God is saying to you <clears throat> and speaking to your heart. So, so as the people of God, God will give us something special today. God gave me a word today. Thank you. What is he speaking to you? I'm not talking about the collective body. We all collectively will receive a word today. But there's something specifically that God wants to speak to your heart. Thank you. Open your heart wide. Open your ears to hear the voice of the Lord. Here's the second part of our teaching, the discrepancies in listening. Matthew 13, verses 14 through 17. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. He, he explains it through the next verse. Though you're hearing, you won't understand it. And though you're seeing, you will have no perception of what you're actually seeing. You'll see the miraculous hand of God and not have a clue about what is going on. I don't want to be so spiritually discerned that I don't know what God is doing in this season. Hallelujah. Let me know God. Hallelujah. Wake me up in the midnight hour and whisper in my ear what you're doing in this season. Speak to my heart, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me know, hallelujah, what's going on in the kingdom. Thank you. Sometimes in our community, and I've been guilty of this, I see the police and sometimes they can be so rude. And I'll stop and I'll say, sir, what's going, officer, what's going on in the neighborhood? Just keep moving, sometimes they'll say. And I'll say, but this is my neighborhood. I want to know what's going on. It's, if it's a thief in the neighborhood, I want to know what's going on. Somebody got killed, I want to know what's going on. Glory to God. Well, Jesus will let us know the things that are going on in the kingdom. We will not be in the dark. We will not be spiritually discerned. This teaching is so powerful. I tell you guys, sometimes I'm studying the lesson. It just seems quite ordinary. And I'll even tell you, oh, we won't be long today. It's not a whole lot to this. But once we delve into the scriptures and the Holy Spirit of God begin to open the letter of God's word, we gain great truths. We, we gain revelation. And that's what's happening this morning. We're gaining revelation in the word of God. Verse 13 says, for this people's heart is waxed gross, tough, thick, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Come on, somebody. Don't be hard of hearing this morning. Don't be, uh, oh, I'm going to church, but I don't really feel like it. You know, every Sunday, this is what we do. Hallelujah. No, get yourself right. If you're feeling that way, repent. Ask God to renew you, to rejuvenate you so that you can receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't let your ears be wax growth. Don't be dull of hearing. Thank you, Lord. Or your heart be wax growth and heavy. Thank you, Lord. And hard. Thank you, Jesus. And your ears dull of hearing. 
I'm so tired of hearing the same thing. Glory to God. I come to church, seem like I'm hearing the same thing. What the preacher going to say today? Hallelujah. And your eyes closed. You can't see nothing. You can't understand anything. You're spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. Repent, repent, repent. It reminds me of the church, and I believe it's of Ephesus, that have left, left their first love. Thank you. Come on, let's get back to our first love. Let's be rejuvenated. Let's be revived. Let's get excited about the work of God. Let's get excited about working in the kingdom. Thank you. When we first got saved, we were excited, Fred. Whatever we, our hands could find to do, we did it. All to the glory of God. Come on, let's get revived. Let's get stirred up again. Hallelujah. To do whatever it takes for the kingdom of God. Oh, my God. And when we do that, the Lord says this. He says, I'll give you an understanding heart. <clears throat> I'll give you eyes to see and ears to hear. And you will be converted. You will be changed. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 3, I think it says, for when the times of refreshing shall come, glory to God, we need a time of refreshing in the church. After the pandemic, we need a time of refreshing when people have stop coming. Come on, get refreshed. Come back to the house of God. Thank you. He said, they shall be converted, converted and I will heal them. I will heal you of your hurts. I'll heal you of your pain. I'll heal you of every malady. Thank you. I don't know about you. I want to be healed this morning. I want to be healed. I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. I want to be made free in God. Thank you, Jesus. Free in my spirit. I want to be able to see. I want to be able to hear God. Thank you. Hallelujah. We need a time of refreshing. Glory to God. Where God will speak not just through the leader, but he'll speak in the pews. Thank you. He'll give revelation in the pews. He'll give a word of prophecy from the pews. We need a refreshing. Verse 16, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. You're blessed when you can see and perceive and understand, when you can hear and understand God's word. This is the final verse here, verse 17 of Matthew 13. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. We talk about the prophets of old, and I'm always enamored to talk about uh, the prophet Samuel, to, to talk about Elijah and Elisha, those great prophets of the Old Testament. But these prophets desire to see what we see presently. They desire to hear what we hear. They knew that the Messiah would come, but he did not come during their lifetime. But he has come now. Hallelujah. And, and the disciples of old talked about how they handled, their, uh, they handled the Lord. Uh, they, they heard his voice. They walked with him and talked with him. The prophets of old desired to see that day. We're living in a time of great revelation, a time of great blessing, a time of great miracles. Let's walk therein. Hallelujah. Let's make sure we have ears to hear the voice of the Lord. Ears to hear the word of the Lord. God bless you. I hope this teaching has blessed you as it has blessed me. I feel a little bit stronger this morning. A little bit more matured spiritually having studied it. This has been Kingdom Precepts with Dr. Deborah Wright. Keep on tuning in to us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Go out on YouTube and subscribe. You've been listening, but you haven't subscribed. We need more subscribers on YouTube to Kingdom Precepts with Dr. Deborah Wright. God bless and thank you.